Now, typically when we use photos in this class, they're um, images that I've done for clients. They're not actually photographs that I've taken. This, however, is a photograph that I took. Um, it's an architectural image uh, that I took in Cuba from a moving bus. So we've got the window frame of the bus here. Um, there's some crap on the window. I don't know if you know this, but all the best architectural photographs are taken from moving buses. Um, but you're not. Uh, but it is a good example of the kind of perspective issues you may find if you're photographing a tall building. Wh what's going on here? What's, what's, what's wrong with this? What kind of perspective issues do you see? Well, I think it's safe to assume that this telephone pole is in fact vertical, and yet it's leaning inward. I think it's safe to assume that this door frame is in fact vertical, and yet it's leaning inward. And the whole building has this feeling like it's leaning away from us. What causes that? Well, it's a perspective problem. Um, if you're taking a photograph of like a mall from across the parking lot, you're looking straight across. So there's the front of the mall. It's nice and vertical. Your lens is nice and vertical. Your sensor is nice and vertical. But if you've got a tall building that you have to photograph, you tilt the camera back to look up at it, and suddenly your image plane, your lens plane, and your sensor plane are no longer parallel. It's that lack of parallelocity, parallelism, parallelociousness, I don't know, um, parallelality, that's causing, you know, it looks like the building's leaning away from you. It's actually you leaning away from the building, but we always kind of assume that we're okay, so it looks like the building's leaning away from us. And it looks like the top of the building is farther away, and in, in fact, it actually is. Fixing this in Photoshop, is that destructive or non-destructive? Yes. You can't answer yes to a question like that. It was two part. Is it destructive? It, or is, it, destructive. it is destructive. Okay, why? Because well, because of what I just said about, yeah, yeah, any kind of transformation, especially something like this where we're pulling the sides out and this gets larger, it's an enlargement. Not enlarging down here, is enlarging up there. It'll tend to get a little bit softer. So. If you're thinking about getting into architectural photography as a career, is there a way of doing this in camera? Yes. What? A tilt shift lens, or you might have heard the term a PC lens, a perspective control lens. Um, that works in a different way. If you've got the building up here and you're down here looking up at it, instead of tilting your whole camera back to look up at the building, you can do a, what's called a rise on the front lens. The front lens rises up. Now you're looking up at the building, but your image plane, your lens plane, and your sensor plane are all still parallel. So you don't have to worry about these issues. That being said, are they really cheap? Can you like pop a loony into a machine, turn the handle in a... No, they're like in the many thousands of dollars range. So if you got a couple jobs doing architecture, this is probably an okay way to do it. But if you think you're going to be an architectural photographer and only do that, you might want to look into the PC lens, uh, which has other features as well, but that's one of the, the main things it's used for. All right, so let's take a look at correcting the perspective on this image. Now, there is, I don't want to say an automated way, there is a filter that will do the perspective correction. I'll show you that. I find it doesn't give me the same precision. I find I, I, I prefer doing it by hand. So I'll start with a filter, and then we'll do it by hand. The filter is under, believe it or not, the filter menu. So I'm going to duplicate this layer so you can see a before and after, and I'm going to go under filter, lens correction. I don't know who Len is, but apparently this is his correction. And uh, this is normally used to correct for things like um, barrel distortion or pincushion distortion. And it, you can actually tell it to do it automatically. It'll look for your camera model, the lens model, and it knows what kind of corrections to make. For a perspective issue, though, we're going to go into the custom panel. And you could use this for fixing that barrel distortion. You could do a little pincushion distortion to fix the barrel distortion. Or if it had pincushion, you could add some barrel distortion to make it holy mackerel. Um, but that's not what we're here for. We're not here for chromatic aberration. We're not here for vignetting. We're here for the perspective. And with this slider, we could give it worse perspective problems. Or going to the left, we can start to pull out some of those perspective problems. And as you move that slider, you can see that the verticals are starting to go closer to vertical. But they're not quite getting there. Look at this. I've got this to where this this door frame is pretty much vertical. The telephone pole is still leaning in a little bit, so I think it needs a little bit more. So I'll pull that to the left a bit. And now, interesting, I've got them parallel. You can see this one is kind of leaning a bit to the right. This one is kind of leaning about the same amount to the right, so the whole image is tilted this way. I'm going to rotate it back. Uh, now here's the rotation thing. There's the angle. So I'm going to grab this little dot, and you can swing this dot around to change the rotation. Because this circle is so tiny, 
you don't have a lot of resolution as far as doing small amounts. Watch this. I click on this, and I'll start, ro oops, rotating it the wrong way. Rotate it back. See how it's very big jumps that it does. If you want a little bit more resolution, watch this. If I, I've still got the mouse button held down. If I go straight up, it's like putting a longer handle on that dial. Now I can make some more precise adjustments. And when they both look vertical, I'll let go and hit OK. There's before and there's after. So I was able to do it, but I find it's a bit of a clunky interface. So let's go through the process of doing it manually. I'm going to throw out the layer that I just did, because I'm going to do it by hand, and I'm going to do a, a darn fine job of it. And I'm going to duplicate that layer again. Command J, there's my new layer. And this time, I'm going to go under Edit, Transform, Perspective. Grab these sides and pull them outwards. So I've got a little more control now about how far I pull these sides out. There is something unusual happening. What's happening to the building as I pull these sides out? It didn't happen on the lens correction filter. What's happening to the building? Yeah, it's kind of getting squished down. It's getting squat a little bit. Um, so we'll deal with that in a minute. But for now, let's take a look here. Um, it's hard to tell when they're vertical, but you can turn on a grid. Anybody know the keyboard shortcut for putting a grid over top of the image? Command apostrophe. And that'll throw a little grid over top that you can kind of use as a, a reference guide. And I'm kind of getting the same issue here. I've got them parallel, but they're all leaning to the right. Remember the perspective and the skew filter are really closely related. If I grab this middle point here, I can skew everything back over to the left. So I can pull those things back up to vertical. I could also try doing a rotation and maybe kind of move the image down a little bit. But I think that skew does a pretty good job. Now, I still have the problem of it having gotten squat. I'll give you a few minutes to kind of play around with that. And you may find that once you pull this out, you need to do a little bit of work on the middle part up here to do some skewing. Uh, nudge it around until you get everything pretty well vertical. And then we'll deal with that shrinking of the building. It's gotten short. Here's how we're going to deal with that. We're going to do a scale. We're going to grab the middle part, and we're going to lift it back up. Remember what I said, we don't want to do a whole bunch of transformations. Here's the cool part. We're in perspective right now. Go into the edit menu, down to transform. Don't hit the check mark. Don't accept this transformation. We're still waiting to do this transformation. When you click on the edit transform, look at that. There's a check mark beside perspective. And I can now pop up to scale. I can grab the top here, and I can loft that back up. I can get it its height back. So without accepting that transformation, you can jump back and forth between perspective, skew, rotate, all of them, even distort if you wanted to. And it doesn't apply the transformation until you hit the check mark. So that avoids doing multiple transformations and kind of compounding the softness that doing a transformation adds. You know what, guys? Right now, you may find, notice how I've got mine a little bit lower in the frame so I can reach that. If you're zoomed in, uh, your machines right now are set that you can't scroll outside the window. When, you, when your image is like this, it's always in the center. So Command minus will zoom you out a bit so you can still grab these edges. And there's no point changing them on the IMAX, but there is something with the preferences you can do that will let you do magical things like this. Look at that. I've scrolled it right outside the window. Are you guys all jealous and stuff? You should be because you can't do that. Uh, it's, it's enabling over scroll. And when it looks good, hit the check mark. Or you can hit return on the keyboard. Do you know about the little blue guidelines in Photoshop? The guides. Yes, OK. Um, they're blue, so they're boy guides. If they were pink, they'd be girl guides. Um, but basically, as long as your rulers are visible, you can click and drag out these little guides. And that's also a good way. Like I could have put that beside one of those. But I find the grid just works just as well. The toggle for the blue guides, if you have some in there, if you want to hide them, because they get really annoying when you have a lot of them, is command semicolon. Hides or reveals those. So uh, under a uh, command R, or you go under view rulers. Command R calls them up, yeah. And then they annoy me, so I always command R them away as well. Now, I, I very carefully took this photograph from a moving bus because, you know, I'm a professional. And I included the window frame down here. And on the other side, there was um, a bit of balcony from the other side of the street. And yet, they're not there anymore. What? What happened? Where did they go? Here's the original image. 
They got corrected right out of the image, right out of the frame. Well, this has some kind of scary implications. Let's say you're working for a, a, a factory and you're photographing their main plant, but they have these big iron gates um, with the name of the factory, and you very carefully compose your image with the gates kind of framing the factory. And then you do your perspective correction, what's going to happen? You're going to perspective correct those right out of the frame. Um, or maybe uh, you know it's a really well landscaped campus that the building's on, and there's these trees, and you're using that to frame it. And again, when you correct it, out they go. So when you're shooting, take into account what your final composition is going to be after the correction. Um, let's say, for example, the building kind of comes up in the center like this, and you want to have about a you know about an inch of, of breathing space around the building, so you get an inch at the top and bottom. Um, but what you don't think about is that oh, the bottom of the building comes out to almost the edge of the frame. When you do the correction. Suddenly the building is filling the frame. There's no space, no sky around it. So think about what it's going to look like after you do the correction.